Good evening. This is the June 15th, 2021 meeting of the Union County Zoning Board of Adjustment. It's now in session. My name is Darren Green. I'm the Vice Chairman of the Union County Zoning Board of Adjustment. Also sitting in on today's meeting are board members Larry Britt, Mark Tilly, Bill McGuirt, with our alternates Dion Edwards and Francis Ward. Also present with us today, Jim King, who is our Zoning Administrator, Amy Griffith, who is the clerk to our board, and our attorney, Derek Thurman. There are three types of hearings that the Board of Adjustment hears. First, an application for a variance from uh, the regulations of the zoning ordinance, or second, an appeal from a decision or interpretation of the zoning administrator, or third, uh, which we'll be hearing today, is an application for a special use permit. The order of each case will be as follows. All parties will be given will, who plan to give testimony, pro or con, must complete a green form to speak. I believe many of you have already done that. If you would like to speak, they're up here at the podium. And you will also have to be sworn in. A zoning staff member will explain why the permit was denied or why a variance is requested or the nature of the special use permit application. The board may question the zoning staff member, uh, the applicant may question the zoning staff member, and the applicant presents his or her testimony for the case. The board may then question the applicant. The zoning staff member and persons in opposition may also question the applicant. The applicant may uh, present sworn testimony, sworn witnesses. They will be subject to cross-examination by those who uh, are in disagreement. Other parties wishing to speak pro or con will be given reasonable time to present sworn testimony. They will also be subject to cross-examination. The zoning staff member and then the applicant will be given opportunity for rebuttal. After the hearing a case, the board will review the case and render a decision. This is usually done following the close of the public hearing and the board's deliberation. However, the board may elect to take up to 30 days to render a decision. You may remain present during deliberations or you may call the zoning staff member after the session to receive the decision of the board. All exhibits must remain with the board. Please hand them first to our clerk for tagging. If your case is not appealed to Superior Court for after 30 days, you may pick them up or they will be destroyed. If you feel, feel there's a conflict of interest of any board member or an association that you would prejudice your case, please let it be known at the start of your case. We are a quasi-judicial board and can accept, accept only sworn testimony. No hearsay evidence is admissible. Appeal from this board is to the Union County Superior Court. You have 30 days from the date of the board's written decision in which to appeal in accordance with North Carolina General Statute 160A-388E. I remind everyone to please turn off all your cell phones at this time so we are not interrupted. At this time, we will move on to our agenda, which is uh, item A, a determination of quorum. We do have a quorum tonight um, with our chairman absent, but uh, I'll be stepping in, but we have two alternates who are here. And uh, once we move forward, we will uh, mm -hmm. actually um, have, who's up? That's y'all's job. I don't believe our, our new board members ever. Have you ever voted on a case? Or, I believe, we'll let you move up then, uh, sir. And Dion, you're, you're next up next time. Is that okay with you? Or are you gonna get mad at <laughs> So um, we will allow um, Mr. Ward to actually be replacing the voting member tonight. Item B is the approval of the April 13th, 2021 Board of Adjustment meetings. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next item is determination of any conflict of interest for case number 2021-SUP-02. Does anyone at this time wish to uh, announce they have a, any conflict? Anyone? No one has a conflict. Okay, at that time we will move on um, to... The item B. Item B is special use permit, um, which is special use permit 2021-SUP02. 
special use, per, special use permit. Mr. and Mrs. Mendez are requesting a special use permit to construct and operate a wedding slash special event venue on the property located at 3015 Lancaster Highway. Union County Development Ordinance requires the issuance of a special use permit for entertainment and spectator sports for the property located at this address, 3015 Lancaster Highway, more specifically identified by partial number 09-330-072. Uh, Mr. Uh, King, is the uh, petition complete? It is. Uh, again, I'll ask if any board member has any conflict with this agenda item. No. no sir. <coughs> At this time, I'll ask for a motion to hear the petition. Motion to hear. Second. Motion to have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 At this time, uh, in accordance with our rules, of operation if anyone here who is an interested party means if you receive the notice of this meeting uh, and you would like to see this meeting continue to the next meeting of our board you have the opportunity and the right to request a continuance at this time what that means is basically you're asking for 30 more days roughly or another month um, to have this uh, meeting uh, heard. If you would like to request that continuance, you may do so at this time. I will tell you, by requesting a continuance, that means you're saying um, we need more time to have um, professional evidence to present to you. Let me explain what that means. Um, if you walk up here tonight and say one thing, I, that's fine, but you have to have professional evidence to present to this board in order to um, have us hear it. Basically, hearsay, your opinion, is your opinion, but we need um, professional evidence, basically, is what I'm saying. So if you ask for a continuous, don't come back 30 days without professional evidence to back up why you asked for continuous. So anyway, if there's anyone here right now who would like to see this uh, meeting continue for 30 days, please, this is your opportunity and your last opportunity to come forward and request that. Okay. I don't see anybody jumping up. Therefore, we will move forward. Mr. Uh, King. You may come and be sworn. You swear the evidence you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. So tonight we have a special use um, permit application before you. As for the property, it's located at 3015 Lancaster Highway. Property owners are Angelica and Arceli Mendez. I do uh, apologize about the agenda packet went out. I had it down there as Mr. and Mrs. Um, but after that was mailed out to you guys, uh, the Mendez's uh, contacted me and let me know that they are sisters and that, uh, that I had put it in the agenda packet wrong. So I apologize for that. But they are the applicant and the owner of the property. So again, the property is located at 13, 3015 Lancaster Highway. It's a property that is highlighted in red on the map. It's right there at the intersection of Lancaster Highway and Carmel Church Road. Uh, property is currently zoned RA40. Uh, what they're asking for is for an event venue for weddings and other type of events. Uh, under the Union County Development Ordinance, that falls under entertainment, which is classified as entertainment and spectator sports. It's allowed in RA40 with the issuance of a special use permit by this board. Uh, they are requesting approval for a 3,600 square foot indoor event center. Uh, this would be considered a minor indoor uh, event because it's less than 20,000 square foot in size and the lot size itself is 15.6 acres. This right here is the, the con concept plan that was originally submitted with the application uh, I have been in email correspondence with the Mendezes, and uh, one of the things I always do with all applicants is when I prepare staff analysis, I'll send it to them so they can see what staff recommendations are going to be. And I'm under the impression they've been working with a design professional to make some amendments to this uh, concept plan or layout, uh, which I assume will be presented tonight as new evidence. 
So the property again is zoned RA40 and it's surrounded completely by properties zoned RA40 as well. Land use plan calls for this area to be um, single family residential with some mixed residential in close proximity to it. As far as the development status of this property, it's listed as being undeveloped. And as far as any transportation improvements, uh, there are none. Um, slated for uh, Highway 200 or Lancaster Highway is going to remain a uh, two lane paved road um, uh, through the uh, CTP. As far as environmental issues, it shows that there's a blue line stream, which would be like a perennial stream or tributary running through the property. However, uh, our stormwater engineer, Mr. Brian Hawkins, has determined that that has, was a man-made ditch that was dug and therefore uh, would not require any type of buffering against it. And uh, why it's located on our GIS system like that, I'm not really sure, but it should not be showing up as a blue line, blue line string. So kind of outline with the applicants, you know, requesting staff, you know, has some recommendations that they would like to see uh, move forward if this uh, special use permit is approved. As always, you know, must comply with all local, state, and federal regulations. Must comply with the Union County Development Code and the North Carolina Building Code. Uh, as applied for, it was an indoor event, and staff would say only indoors and no activities allowed outdoors. Parking needs to be set back a minimum of 40 foot from the right of way. The, uh, the site plan that was presented uh, in, in your package there shows parking very close to the 200 uh, right of way. Also uh, to uh, include screening, the S2 screen along the side rear property lines, uh, along the, uh, the 200 corridor have an S1 screening. For safety reasons, our uh, transportation planner would like to see the driveway access off of uh, Carmel Church Road. The applicant in the application proposed hours of Friday through Sunday from 5 to 1 a.m. Staff feels that Sunday at 1 a.m. is kind of questionable and staff makes a recommendation to limit that to 10 p.m. Uh, applicant has uh, proposed a maximum of 200 persons at the facility, which staff feels would be appropriate. And then the right-of-way dedication, uh, if, if needed or requested by uh, NCDOT, that they would dedicate additional or the uh, right-of-way as needed per NCDOT, and they would need a NCDOT driveway permit. Staff has, or excuse me, uh, the applicant has indicated that they would like to have some outdoor ceremony uh, activities with non amplified sound. The only thing about that, this is such a small property, and they're, they're right on the verge of if they did have outdoor activity, of the parking trip in it to be either a major or minor outdoor entertainment venue. With the minor, they're gonna to have to provide a 200 foot buffer. With the major, they're gonna to have to provide a 500 foot buffer. And with it being 15 acres, that's gonna be next to impossible to do. Uh, they would have to provide a sound study to reduce that uh, buffer requirement, which I'm not sure if that's gonna be evidence presented tonight or not. But that's the only way that they could do that. Um, is through that sound study showing that the decibel rating would be at 65 decibels or low at the property line. Um, with that being said, uh, that's staff's presentation. We'll be happy to answer any questions the board may have of us at this time. The applicant is here as well to uh, give presentation. All right. Any questions for Mr. King? Uh, what was the, I saw on the plant that it looked like they had the driveway access off of 200 they did and that's what that's where the recommendation to have it off of Carmel Church came from uh, our transportation plan was looking at that and had some concerns with site distance and also with the volume of traffic on 200 that was a staff recommendation to move it that is and it's my understanding from the Mendez's 
did their new concept plan is has addressed that showing it coming off of Car Carmel Church Road but I'll let them okay. be the ones to present that anything else for Mr. King at this time sir thank you mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll talk to you soon at this time those who would like to present evidence uh, in favor of the petition including the uh, property owner and those who petition petitioning please come forward and, and be sworn those who are presenting evidence in favor including yeah I'm just trying to figure out how many people I saw a lot of people filling out green pieces of paper and I don't I think it's best that we split it up at this time so if you're going to present evidence in favor please come forward now if you would like to speak All right, there's a Bible there before you. Please place uh, your hand on the Bible. It's right hand, right hand, right. Left hand on the Bible. Left hand, right hand. Left hand on the Bible, raise your right. I'm sorry. I have a lawyer here. I have two lawyers here. I'm not a judge. <laughs> Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter at hand? All right, thank you. Please come for, uh, one at a time and state your name. Good evening. Everyone, thank you for being here tonight. Um, my name is Angelica Mendez, and my sister and I are the owners of 3015 Lancaster Highway. We have owned this property for about three years now. We are planning on building a wedding event venue, and it has been a long process but we are excited to be here at this hearing. I hope everybody else will be excited as we are, and especially as, you know, with what happened last year, we're happy to see people celebrating weddings, graduations, and we want to be part of that this year. Thank you. My name is Gary Selly Mendes, and like my sister mentioned, we are sisters. We are both the owners of 3015 Lancaster Highway. Um, we are lifelong residents of Union County. We grew up here, we went to the schools here, we went to college here, we have our families here. Um, one of our dreams was basically to own a large tract of land. So when we saw the opportunity, we seized it. Um, we had a dream of uh, owning a wedding venue, and this is why we're here. Um, we do own a company and basically we um, are an event decorator. So that's how we got started. We've been doing that for a couple of years now. Um, we've been to different venues and basically we determined that there was a need, especially since COVID and there was an overflow of um, people that just wanted to have some type of event last year. Everything just basically is backed up. A lot of the venues are pretty much booked for years basically for years um, our concept is basically we're not in competition with any of the other venues around us and what I mean by that is our venue is totally different we would be more upscale upscale and offer more luxurious packages a lot of the venues are, are um, close to where a property is located they're mostly barn style or outdoors um, like mr. King mentioned ours will be strictly indoors we do agree with the staff recommendations. Um, we are still working on the official site plan. We just received word from uh, the NCDOT as far as moving the driveway to the Carmel Church uh, Road location. So we are still working on that site plan. It's not 100% official just yet, but we do plan to submit that as soon as we have it. What are your intentions other than weddings to have at that site? Uh, birthday parties, uh, sweet 16s, any type of baby showers, uh, corporate events, luncheons, uh, Mother's Day brunch, church gatherings, um, things like that. Anything else, Raymond? 
and we intend to be good neighbors. We are not here to you know bother anybody else. Um, throughout the three years that we owned the property, we've been um, moving things along. Initially, it was slow because we both have jobs. We both have things to take care of, um, and then you know of course the COVID happened, so it just pretty much put a. Um, it became everything just became stagnant as everybody knows but um, we're excited that everything is starting to pick up again everything's starting to move forward a lot of the professionals that we had contacted um, during COVID they were not you know operating because of COVID so now you know um, we have more we've been more in contact with them as well so that's why we do not have the site plan readily available as of right now um, Initially, uh, what we heard from the neighbors, they would approach us, not just the um, adjoining neighbors, but other people as well that they would see us working out on the field. Um, they would come up to us and they would ask us what we were planning on doing and we would tell them. Initially, um, we did not you know, give out all the full details, but as we got to know people that would come to us and say, hey, we are our neighbors, you know, we live at this property or this other property, then yes, we basically said this is what we plan on doing. Uh, no one. Um, seem to be in opposition to that. They, in fact, stated, most of them stated that they rather have that than to see a developer come in. Um, I am aware that, you know, everybody would rather see that because we're still keeping the beauty of what the land is. And we're only using about uh, no more than five acres of our 15.604 acres. So eventually it would still be a green area. Um, what we are not, requesting a full rezoning, just a special use permit for that purpose of the indoor event center. Um, so the neighbors do not have to worry about, you know, a developer coming in or us coming in and, and building uh, multi, you know, We're housing. Been We've been offers. getting a lot of uh, very attempt tempting offers, not just from real estate agents, other owners are in the area as well as developers. At this time, we do not, we are not entertaining anything like that. Um, like I said, we are very proud that we are, that we actually own this track of land. We've worked very hard, and like I said, we've grown up in Union County. We've seen all the changes. We love seeing the green. That's what we intend on keeping it. You know, uh, we know you know about farming and everything like that, cattle, et cetera. So we are essentially maintaining that aspect of our land. But just to be clear, you are okay with item three of staff recommendations for indoor activities? Yes, sir. Okay, thank yes. you. Yes. <clears throat> what about the time? I think Mr. King said y'all were originally requesting five to one Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and the county has recommended uh, from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Sunday. Is that an issue? Yes, that was originally my typo, so I apologize for that, I'm sorry. Um, but we do agree with the recommendation. I do agree that on Sundays, you know, and-, and A lot of people have to go to back work to Monday, work. so they're not gonna be yeah. there till one in the morning. Yeah, So. and I don't anticipate that the events will be um, held that long either. I, I was assuming, you know, maybe by six, but if the, you know, staff recommendation is 10, then that can, we can use that time for breakdown, cleanup, et cetera, not necessarily for the event itself. And we have been to many weddings in the past and people don't stay till one in the morning. <laughs> like people go there with their kids, so. Well, one thing, I've been on this board for quite a while. And one thing with events that we've had in the past in the county, a lot of the concern has been trying to figure out a nice way to say it, how the <clears throat> level of the partying that goes on. <laughs> and I think that what we've seen in the past is people have concerns over that. So what is your plans to keep it at a an acceptable, you know, you don't you don't want to be a bad neighbor. No, so I mean, what is your plans on um, screening your events that you have? Um, well, we will have a contract, and the contract will outline what's allowed and what's not allowed. Um, we're gonna got, we're gonna have security people. We're gonna have somebody that's gonna be there the whole time. Yeah property will not be just you know abandoned or vacant yeah. there will always be someone there 
Uh, we will have our own security personnel as well as, you know, we will contact law enforcement. Uh, so they're, you know, easily available for that as well. Uh, as far as the building structure, we are working with an architect. Um, and we plan on having um, a lot of installation as well as thick walls and uh, thick doors. So that will help alleviate any of the noise that may be able to filtrate through that. But um, we would not allow, you know, we will provide our own amplifiers or, you know, speakers. So it's not like the guests will be able to manipulate the, um, the noise level or, you know, how loud it will be. It will be controlled by us. Now, how will you handle alcohol on the, with the events? Okay, so um, we will, license. yeah, they, they will need to obtain a permit uh, from North Carolina. Um, we will require them to have insurance as well. We would carry insurance as well. Um, most of the time, when you mention the guests that they, you know, that security will be on site, that's when, you know, a lot of the people, how you refer to how are we going to screen them. That's the number one thing that you mention to someone and they kind of back off. And that kind of gives you an idea of the type of event that they were thinking they were going to hold. But as soon as you mention that, they kind of, you know, understand and they either say, yes, we want to pursue this, or they say no, or, you know, they, they agree to what we have to offer. I mean, there are many other venues that, you know, they can go and be loud, but that's not the case yeah, in our, that, that's we not want. our intent. Yeah, our that's intent. not what we want. We want to have a good reputation. With everybody. Okay. Well, how do you intend on? I saw the number of 200 people. How do you intend on maybe at 10:30 or 11 o'clock at night that the noise don't get outside? You know how I know you've been to places that people tend to go outside and all. Mm -hmm. Do you have a plan to make so sure the people to understand that? Go to your car, that's one thing, but you can't just go outside and congregate. Correct. Um, and that's where, you know, the... We decided to put the... We decided to uh, put certain things inside of the building so people do not congregate outside. So we will have many other things that they can look at, where they can hang out, instead of having them be outside. Um, we will have buffers, and that was one of the staff recommendations. So maybe all of that will... I don't know, make people just want to stay inside. That's what we, we plan on doing. That's what I've seen other venues have before where they just concentrate on, you know, having everything indoor instead of having people outside. And when we're planning on putting the venue, it's gotta be really far it's from the net from yes. the neighbors. So we specifically uh, decided to put it in the outermost corner where it's more towards uh, Lancaster Highway and to the vacant lot next to us. So it will be very, um, I'm, you know, this is acres apart from the neighboring neighbors. Okay. This is in, not in the city limits, this is in the county. So have you talked with anybody from the sheriff's office about providing law enforcement security? No. We were not at the moment. Um, we're just waiting to see what. Uh, the decision beats for today to be able to move forward, but that is our in our agenda, our next step. We just need to get the green line yeah. from you guys so we can move on. Ms. McGuire, is there a ordinance about that? For if you have like there's alcohol on the premises and you have to have uh, so many off-duty law enforcement if you, if you per contract, amount of people. If you contract with the sheriff's office security they'll do it based on the number of people and give you an hourly rate okay. it, it, but then remember it's gonna be up to 200 it could be less less than yeah that. especially as we start out and people start knowing that we're there and then too also I mean most people get married on Saturday maybe Sunday or Friday but like the beginning of the week that Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday I mean there's nothing gonna be going on those days oh, I had a question can't really see clearly on here so is is the property more or less surrounded by trees yes sir so there won't be a, there'll always be some sort of trees to help yes sound and we're thinking areas. about we're thinking about putting more trees around the area yeah. so we are being one of the staff accommodations is the s1 and s2 screen so we will have more shrubs and more trees 
And like I said, that was the whole uh, intention of just maintaining the beauty of what the property looks like right now. So we don't intend to chop down any trees or anything like that. That would remain. Anything else? <laughs> Um, okay. Thank you. Is there um, anyone else here who needs to speak in um, favor? Mr. Chairman, I do have a question. Um, yes, sir. One of the things that you said you were looking at is maybe doing corporate events, lunches and stuff like that. Would that be something that the uh, board would need to look at amending the time limitations like during the week, would that limit you from doing corporate events just to the weekends, I guess? I was thinking that myself because a lot of the corporations now do these team building the things that they do during the week, during the day, and during the week. So. Um, I believe that was in one of the um, emails that I sent to Mr. King about uh, maybe instead of um, doing the events on Sundays up to 10, maybe switching it to where we have a couple hours during the week for to be able to accommodate uh, those corporate events. And of course, it, those will be during the daytime. Okay, well through the weeks, if you had an event, what hours would you want it to be? During the week from, I guess from 11, 11 to, to 5, 11 to 5. 11 to 3, yes. Five to five, three. Eleven to five. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, <clears throat> you, in your materials, you had um, an opinion from an expert about um, property values. Yes. Uh, do you have? Is that person here today to talk to us? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. So he needs to come be sworn as well. Um, sure. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter of hand? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sir. You may come up and present your name. <coughs> tell I'm, <coughs> I'm uh, Andy Morrison with uh, Morrison Appraisal. And uh, so when, you know, we get asked to do these impact studies a lot. And so you know, we're basically concerned with um, just the value, valuation, um, how if the uh, intended use will uh, substantially and negatively impact the surrounding properties. So, you know, we've, we've done a lot of these every year and so just kind of compile as we find them. Um, so we've got, we've got a few studies we've done. Um, let me just get to that page. We we'll try to, you know, we try to look for like, uh, you know, wedding venues and uh, you know, any kind of gathering places, um, and we kind of just kind of with this one on where when I, when we were requested, you know, it not fully being you know, the idea, so we just kind of kind of broad and <coughs> tried to find what we could and just use some old studies that we had and just added on to them. So yeah, one of them um, it's the Rowan Hills Country Club. Um, you know, they have hold the large uh, weddings, events, um, even the uh, the sports aspect of the event. So that's an indoor outdoor. Um, we did uh, so the site in front of it um, is uh, on Roosevelt Boulevard. It sold back in 2011 for, uh, for 950. At the time, that was a very good price. Um, it was the um, Park Sterling site that Rowan Hills sold off from the tennis courts. Um, we looked at. Um, Sonic lot. Oh, yeah, sorry. Or, or to the microphone, that's probably better. Um, so another one we've uh, we've done is uh, the Masonic Lodge on Franklin Street. So it's got uh, it's kind of surrounded with residential and commercial. Um, and we had uh, there was a, a building across the street from it that sold back in 08 for 200, um, which was uh, well within market. Also had uh, an 09 and 010. Uh, two residential homes behind it that were in line with the uh, with what the values you see now, and, and I think uh, you know it, it, with this one too now I'd probably add to that study with the uh, the new development of 
those uh, five or six homes on Morgan Mill Road. So, uh, yeah, I don't think a developer would, you know, come in on that if it, if if the use itself was, you know, hurting the values. Uh, we did the American Legion post on Southern Avenue. Um, same deal. That's that's got commercial, industrial, and residential uses around it. Um, and, uh, there's a house, uh, an 05 that sold for 63. And that, that's that's in line with what kind of those houses back there are. And um, and then the other one we have is uh, the Treehouse Vineyard, which that one's a you know a little newer. Um, so and, uh, probably probably more what they're kind of doing. Except it's more of an outdoor type of deal. But uh, you've got the houses. There's a falling tree lane house that sold and. 14 for 136 and it was like $73 a foot. Um, and it's in the backside of Bramblewood subdivision. And that was in uh, just about right on the average of what homes were selling for in there. Um, and yeah, and just that, that tree house area in general, just, you know, um, you know, we actually own a few rental homes back there and just you know, the values have certainly gone up back there. So I, I don't think there's- Who owns, who owns the rental homes? Uh, just our family. We have some oh, personal homes. Personally. Yeah, right by there. So it hadn't had any. Uh, the 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 vineyard hasn't impacted it uh, negatively. So but that, I mean, that's that's basically what, you know what we've been tasked to do. Other than that, um, so if you have any questions regarding any of that, I'll be happy to answer them. Any questions? No, it's well documented. So. Are any of these properties outside the city limits, or are they in the city limits? Matter? Most of them are in the city, um, yeah. But it, it, it's you know, the way I, I look at it. It's 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 more it's what the use does to the use. You know? okay. It's like a kind of a land use plan. You know. Um, okay. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Anything else to present at this time on, from those who are in favor of the petition? Question for, Question for the sisters. Yeah. Yes, sir. Look, when you stated uh, the property was surrounded by trees on Lancaster Highway, are there trees there also? Um, there. So the way I'm looking at it, this is Lancaster Highway. The trees are along this side, and they kind of curve towards right. the end. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. But we do plan them. Uh, you know putting up screens, shrubs, trees all around the property, all around the right. parking lot. Per, per the recommendations of the staff? Yes, sir. Yes, two screening and yes, one screening. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. King, could you come forward, please, and um, pull up the map of the property for us? I'd just like to see if you could explain to me where trees are and where trees aren't. Yeah, I think slide 10 would probably be the I'm looking at it right here, but so tiny I can't see it. Yeah, I can put up on the GIS. Yeah, if you could do that, it'd be awesome. A couple questions about trees, and let's get that dealt with. That going to show? The, can you put the partial number? Will that help if I give you the partial number? I'm trying to figure out, or can you just outline the partial? Yeah, hold on one second. And I kind of see it there, but it's kind of kind of hard to see that line. But see, so yeah. Go so ahead. Get, get, there, what's that partial number? So highlighted. Partial number? Yeah. Oh, you get asked for it. I told you I'd give it to you. <laughs> let me go find it here. It's 09. Three three zero zero seven two. Say zero seven seven two. 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 Okay. There you go. 
So basically, you're talking about just that far where nobody lives, basically, right. has trees on it. Yes, and that where that's exactly where the you venue can, will be. Um, if you can, it's really that's where right we're here. Yes, it's right here. So you can okay. see how far, how far away it's from, yeah, from the neighbors. Others. Yes. Okay. So, all right. Well, what's that right behind it there? Right here. No. Right. Go down. Down. Right, right, here? Here? right there. Yeah, what is that? Wade Griffin. Wade Griffin. Okay, that's uh, a farm over. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, uh, that's what I wanted to see. Okay, okay anything else from those? Uh, uh, and the tractors that he owns right here. So it, this is closer to where the venue will be. All right. Okay, all right. Anything else from those in favor? Anyone else will speak in favor now, chance. All right, I'll bring you back up when needed. Thank you for your Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, at this time, um, anyone who would like to speak in opposition, I need for you to come forward, please, and be sworn. All at once, please. All up, everybody at once. Uh, yes, that'd be great, because I don't, I don't want to do this. Uh, okay. All right, we're here, everybody. Do you, affirm, do you uh, swear that the, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter at hand? All right, so I'm going to have you come forward, and I don't know who wants to go first. Is there anyone here representing this group, or are y'all kind of just all together? Uh, I had kind of prepared a report and okay. talked to some of these people. All right, well, if you want to go first, then. And they, um, yeah, they can add. I'd kind of, I would just say this. Uh, I don't need people saying the same thing over. I understand. I, 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 want, I, I prefer if somebody could just. Uh, if you can show me your picture. I welcome anybody to come speak. This we're going to be here all night here. I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. I, so I'm glad you've got someone who apparently is prepared. And then we'll hear from everybody. But um, let's keep this as streamlined as possible. Okay. <clears throat> Please state your name, sir. Michael Walters. I live at 3106. I'm sorry, ma'am. Did you get sworn? Or are you here to? Yes, I got sworn. She's just going to help me with the cursor. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> She's not speaking. She's just cursing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. That'll carry over for a couple of days at home. <laughs> okay. um, I just want to pull those up. There's a, there's a picture that you're not showing here. See if it goes over this way. Keep going. Go back the other way. Um, let me have to back up. Show this one right here. Okay, if you see I'm this sorry, right. I, did I get your name? If I did, I missed it. Michael Walters. Michael Walters. Okay, Michael Walters. She forgets something. Okay. Speaking to the mic. Okay. If you look at this slide right here, this is, uh, let's see, are you Andrew? Is that you? Uh, what's your name? Yeah, uh, Andrew. Okay. Andrew prepared this appraisal report. And you may have, and I had the picture on here, and when I tried to get these down, uh, I lost it. But I think I have it and can tell you what page it's on in his. Okay. On page 12 of his report, if you have that, he shows a picture of the surrounding area. And again, I had it in here nice and color. But do you have that report, that appraisal report? Yes, we do. Okay. If you can look at page 12, that's the pictures of the surrounding area that he took and presented in his appraisal. This picture here is from the edge of my driveway. That's my mailbox. If you look straight across the street at the corner post on that fence, right there is where they're going to put the septic system. Okay, uh, just finish up that septic system things. They absolutely, I admire what these ladies have done. It's an incredible amount of work, as you can tell, and they got a lot of grit to, to go forward with it. But the 
way that this appraiser was, appraisal was done, it presents the thing in a different light than it really is. One thing is about the property. You can see that, you can see that field behind there. That's what they're talking about. There's no, tr there's no houses there. But that septic system will be straight across, straight behind my mailbox, and it's about five times larger than a regular septic system. It's a pumping system and all that. And it will have a whole nother set of space for a repair area. Now, do you know why they, that, that uh, Union County requires the same space for a repair area? Same size as your septic system. Well, if you don't, it's because a few years ago, maybe 10, 20, I don't know, they didn't require that. But they had so many failures that now they require it. So they did that expecting the contingency that there may be a failure. Well, if that septic system is right there, that's going to mess up my property value. There's no, there's no doubt about it. I, uh, can, I, can I ask a question? Sure. I, I mean, I totally want to listen to what you got to say. But just as a property onion, owner of Union County, what the heck's the difference between a septic system of that and a house? I it's, mean, every about, property that's got a house in Union County has a septic right. system on it. That's true. The I'm septic just confused system, where you're going with the septic system. The septic system is because it's five times bigger than normal. It's right across the street from my house. And if there's a failure, it's going to flood my yard and Gene Bradley's yard. His yard is lower than that right there. And if you don't think that'll affect my value, I think it will. Because it, when you have it in a house, it's behind the house. It's not like that. Now, there are places on that property where they can put that septic system and it won't be a problem. But right there, you know, we're not talking about just today and what these things look like. We're talking about something that's going to be here for a long time. And there's maintenance requires on that system. They have an engineer that did an excellent plan, but there's contingencies. If the maintenance isn't done, and even if there's a possibility at all of it failing, there's better places to put it on that property. Um, well, I have a, another question then, because you evidently have researched this a lot. Why would this venue require such a huge amount of septic system when it's the bathrooms in it? I mean, a house has showers, washers, and all that. Why would, why would this venue with a couple of bathrooms in it require such a large amount of septic system? Well, because a house is, when you apply for a septic permit, they rate it for four people or household of four. This is rated for 200 people. Now they have you're, a, you're just telling me things I've never heard before. It's in that report. It's in their appraisal report. And the septic report's 102 pages long. It's in the reports you have. Uh -huh. And uh, it's very elaborate. The, uh, the other thing with that is the soil in that area is the worst. It's that blue tallow. It isn't my yard. I'm assuming it is over there. Higher up on the hill, there's no problem. So if there's a failure, it don't go in the ground. And uh, that's why they have an engineered system. They're excavating dirt. They're putting in almost three quarters of a mile of drain line length, three quarters of a mile of drain line length. They're digging out trenches for it. They're, they're putting in a little bit of backfill and then covering that over. Well, I, I understand that a lot of these engineered systems, they have to take out the whole amount of dirt and put new dirt in there because with that drain field and those little trenches, that water's not going to go into the dirt. That's my thought. I'm not an expert on the septic system, but I've had to deal with a few of them. Yeah, so, I have too. So I know. Um, Mr. King? Yes. Uh, I was just going to let you know that last week the Mendezes did send me a very detailed report on the septic system. Um, however, I thought that they were going to present that as evidence tonight, but I don't believe that the engineer is 
present to speak to this report. I do have a copy of it if the board wants to see it. I'd love to read it. Yep. You do want to? Okay. Yeah, it's 102 we'll pages. Uh, and it, you know, it's a good engineering document, but you can see how massive work is. It's massive. It's like this picture massive here. Find the relevant part. Very good. This picture here I took today, and the septic field they're looking at is right in this area over here. I took it right straight this way from that corner. This is a ditch right in front, and it's been a little while since we've had rain. It's been a couple of days, but you can see, I don't know if I can zoom in on that, Kathy. How about zoom in on that? Anyway, you can see right here, doesn't show up good on that. There's water in there. It's standing water. It's got film on the top of it. And that septic system would be right here. That is one example of how this land don't drain very well, okay? <clears throat> so the septic system is a big concern because it's about from here to the corner of my driveway, about from here to you, just across the street. So uh, again, I think the septic guy did a good job, but if you see this drawing here, they are looking at this corner to put the whole event thing. Parking, lot, parking area, septic, everything right here. They, what if they put it over here and have the septic over here? You know, you know I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that that's right or wrong, but if they're going to put an event center here, it don't make sense at all to put it here to me. And also, they said there's no houses there. There's a house here, house here, house here, house here, house here, all up and down the road. There's a map. I hope that map's in here. I probably need you to do this, Kathy. I was going up here and get my pictures. Where did I get them? Can you find them? You switch to the web browser. Yeah, switch back to your over this way? Yeah, I think you minimize, if you minimize right. the web browser, I think you, maybe it'll be okay. there. Oh, maybe not. Well, click on that. You're on, a, on the browser? PowerPoint at <laughs> the bottom no. right there, PowerPoint. You're on the, you're on the PowerPoint, the neck. go over to P. No, go over to P. Right here at the bottom, go to P. Okay, well, that'll work, I guess. Okay, so uh, that's good right there, that picture. Click on this one right here. Now this right here, the property, the place they're talking about that septic system and the event center is right where that red dot is. All those blue dots are families, houses that are around that area. Now I've got a map uh, selecting properties that, are, it, that you can't hardly see, but it's the yellow area there. And from my thinking and the possibility of things that can go on at the event center, those people in that area would be in proximity to deal with the noise and all those other things. And certainly uh, the four surrounding the, the uh, red dot might be in the area where the septic system is. So anyway, it was presented as no houses, no families around that. That's not the case. The, uh, again, if you looked at page 12 of the uh, appraiser's report, he shows pictures that show open field all the way around it. He even shows one down the road, but it's careful not to show the house that's right there. <clears throat> so that's a little bit misleading. And that red dot, it's not just the septic system. It's the whole event center, the parking and everything, if it's there. If you look at the other venues that he selected uh, to compare that are event centers, there's no comparison. If you know where the Masonic Lodge is on, on Franklin Street, and they might have events there, and it might not affect the property values, but the Masonic Lodge may help the property values there because the houses are not the greatest. I own one just right down Hugh Street. It's not in the area that's going to affect the prices of the thing. The other one is uh, v, uh, VFA, VFW Center. It's a building out there on a gravel lot uh, off of Sutherland Avenue. 
all, there's no, there is a couple of houses in the distance, but all around it is uh, commercial stuff. There's a warehouse over here, you know, just across the road is uh, McCulloch's thing. It's all commercial, it's different. Rolling Hills has been there for a long time. Their building is nice, it's, it's in the front, but it's behind a buffer of trees. It's been there a long time, and most of it, they have the building there, but they got a huge amount of property behind that, a golf course and everything. It's just a totally different system, not representative. Uh, the Treehouse Winery, it's a little different, might be in that area, but it's, even though it's, it's right in town off of Bay Street, but once you go back there, they got the wine fields, they got a little pond over here, and it's, it's more oriented that way, and they can have outdoor, uh, outdoor operations. But uh, in the appraisal, it starts off on page two, he says, based on the information gathered, it is my opinion that the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of the abutting or adjoining properties. Well, the other event centers, they were established and property was established. This is a new thing and it will, it will affect some of the properties around there. Okay, and on uh, oops, page three of that report, he states the statements are true and correct. Report analysis, all that sort of thing, or impartial, unbiased, professional analysis, opinions, and conclusions. That's number two on page three. Um, on page five of that report, he says, number 10, responsible and competent property management is assumed. Well, I'm sure for the event center, they have property management. They said they have somebody that's gonna be there, facilities person, but the, the main thing, that septic system is a pretty, if you look at that 102 page report, it's pretty involved and it requires that somebody that's able to operate it be there. Requires inspections a couple times a year, requires maintenance. And again, we're talking about right now. Today, somebody can go out there and change a filter. But what about three or four years from now? How, how is that, you know, the potential is there for it to not to stand up there. The, uh, on his report, the appraisal report on page eight, it's the purpose of the the purpose of the land utilization is for special events use in the RA 40 zoning, the report will address the use will or will not substantially injure the value of the adjoining property and whether it is in harmony with the neighborhood. Well, it's not in harmony, especially right there. Uh, that property I'm may sorry. Can, say again? Are you contesting? This man who is a professional with certification. Absolutely. What are your certifications? Well, I'm a mechanical engineer. I've bought and developed over nine houses and sold them, remodeled them and sold them. And also, I live across the street. And one, one thing that will rebut it right away, if you look at the pictures he took of the surrounding property, and you look at the pictures that, are, that, are, uh, that he didn't take, that's one thing it does it. The rest of it is opinion. Even his last statement is it's his opinion. You, you understand he's rendering an opinion. To That's opponent. right. That's right. And he, his credentials might need to be looked at because the stated thing that he's supposed to do is not, not typically in here as far as I can see. Now, now, in my mind, the burden of proof is on the people that want the special application. Our... We, we are there, we live there. Our burden of proof, we don't have to necessarily do that. My burden of proof is to show that their proof isn't necessarily what it says it is, and it's not. From the standpoint, they showed you the pictures a while ago, said there's no houses there, they said there's woods here and woods here, right across the street from the property, there's uh, Gene Bryant's property, my property's right there on the corner, 
Wade's is right next to that, and uh, other people on up the road, and the people on Carmel Church Road. Now, theirs is more distant, but they're right in proximity that they could be affected. So that is not represented at all in his statement. That, to me, leaves a little bit of doubt, a shadow of a doubt, or more. Okay, so, I, just, just one second. Mr. King, this was submitted as part of the, this um, engineer was submitted as part of an addendum. I just want to make sure that this is in evidence that since we've seen. I just asked him if they want to submit it as evidence. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just want, I, yeah. Time. Okay. So I'll make sure. Yes. I just want to make sure that it came in yeah. as part of their petition. Mr. Thurman, do you want to? Yeah, I was going to ask you, Mr. Thurman, can you please just give some clarification here because we do have a certified person who is trained and is licensed. And are we talking about that with, with no one here who's certified trained to rebut it? So, explain this to me. So are you asking about the appraiser I, I believe or that, about no, the I believe this gentleman uh, who's standing here has just said that this individual, Mr. Uh, Morrison's report is not true. And I'm just asking you, how do we? He, or, well, the he gentleman, has his opinion. Sure. Yeah, I'm saying so, he doesn't have a professional the, the, I'm glad he's a citizen standing before yes. you is not an expert in this field. Right. He can testify as to the conditions okay. that he's familiar with that he sees every day. Right. You know, he's got personal knowledge of what the That's property's right. like, so you can hear that. Uh, to the extent he questions, he, he can show you photographs he personally took. So if those photographs were to make you, sus you, know, you don't have to take an expert's opinion Right, sure. Just because they're an expert, I mean, you can question it. Sure. And if these photographs make you question that, you know, that's those photographs in and of themselves are competent evidence. I'm not telling you what you should decide based on these sure. photographs. Absolutely. Um, but so certainly you can question. Now, now when it comes to his credentials and his professional opinions, I, I, you know, a lay citizen can't contradict those just based on their own opinions. Right. But to the extent. He's familiar yeah, with the property and actually took these photographs and tells you he took them. You can take that into account. Excellent. I do have a question. Is, can you see your house from the road? Is your property wooded? My property is wooded. You can see it from the road. My driveway comes in and curves around, which would be good for an event center, by the way. But you can see it through the trees. Okay. I, I'm just looking at the aerial. It's hard to yeah, really tell. It's hard to tell, tell. the aerial. Okay. I mean, if you zoom in, you could see it. But... The one I showed you with my mailbox, it's at the corner of my driveway. You can turn around. My driveway comes up there, and there's my house right there. Especially Wade's, in the Wade, again, he's right next to me. There's trees on part of his property right next to mine, but you can walk over just a little ways from that. I mean, certainly the septic system is right across from there. A little ways from that. Make sure that you're speaking into the microphone, please. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. He's pretty loud up here. I'm sorry, I get dancing around. Yeah. But anyway, uh, you could see his property directly across there. Pull up that thing again. Uh, Gene's property, there's a little spot of land right there. That's Gene's house. And go over there, right there. Go on our thing. That's our house right there. Now, that's a little distant from that right there. But, but my driveway goes down right in front of that. So if there's a problem, I mean, if the vent center is going to affect what I see when I come down there, septic system and all that, it will change uh, the harmony of the neighborhood. Uh, his statement, again, is this port will address whether it will or will not enter the value of the adjoining property and whether it is in harmony with the neighborhood. It's not in harmony with the neighborhood. The way it is now, the way it is now, if you go over there and you look, putting it on that corner, right to the left of that real red dot is that ditch that I showed you where the water's standing in there, and it's got a film on the top of it, okay? Uh, I don't know if that's DOT's responsibility or whatever. So anyway, <coughs> even with the people up to the right there on Carmel Church Road, it will affect the harmony for them especially when you're talking about <coughs> changing the, uh, the drive to come in on Carmel Church Road. See, now one thing he, now that's another thing I'll get to in a minute, but the, the reason I'm contesting our professional, uh, 
the one thing about a professional, he's got the license and all that. Whether or not he's biased, I don't know. But he certainly, he certainly didn't see all the things and put them down. One of them is, example of his picture on page 12. I, I had a picture in it. I think it's page 12. That is evidence enough that he's presenting property not the way it is. It's very easy to turn around and show the houses. That shows no houses. In every direction, it shows open field and woods, and that's simply not the way it is. That alone can tell you something's missing, and he did it. The other thing is with his, and I'm not here to attack him. I'm here to attack his report. And if that report has holes in it, then, then that report's basically not valid. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's his original work. His work is an art. If I bring original art to you and you see a little bit of its counterfeit, it makes you suspect the whole thing, okay? His judgment on the event centers are not comparable to, to ours. The, uh, the reported op analysis opinions and conclusions are limited only by the reported assumptions and limiting conditions, okay? Whatever that is, but at the end he states it's opinion, professional opinion that it will not hurt the property values or interfere with the, with the uh, uh, harmony of the neighborhood. And that septic tank right across the street from my house messes with my harmony, but also where this, uh, bring up the pictures again. Uh, see, here's, you can bring up that one just for sake. That's uh, owned up from the property across the road, but there's two houses represented there and the houses in the background. Uh, going back up here. Yeah, those, again, that one map that I was showing you, it can affect the harmony of all those based on the traffic. If you look at the traffic, you got 200 people at event center, you're probably gonna have 100 cars coming in and out at particular times. That's not spread out so much. It's when the thing starts, maybe when it enters, maybe that we spread out. Uh, Well, I probably need to finish up here. One thing is, is uh, consider we have these reports, we have all that. They, they're like a picture right now. This is a long-term thing. People are <coughs> growing up here. Uh, what's your name again? <laughs> Gene. Gene Brantley, his family's been there for years. Uh, Wade Griffin's not here. He grew up on that property. His father had that property. I mean, you're coming in, even though they've been in Union County, they have not been in that neighborhood. This is a significant change. Um, let's see who we got here. Um, it's up there. Uh, let's see. Try that one right there. Okay, this is, this is some of the residents on Carmel Church Road. Right behind that red tree, Going not too far behind it is that field. Go up to another one. <coughs> um, and this is all of them, right? Uh, is this the one you did? No, I don't know when you did if you can. <coughs> okay. Can you rotate that? Yeah. If you can't rotate it, we'll just live with that. Okay, this, this uh, you know, this should be rotated. The road up there at the top, see that black smudge there? The road up there at the top is Highway 200. That black smudge is the drain field for the septic system. The septic system is all in that corner. The whole event center and everything is in that corner 
whereas that whole square is the 15 acres we're talking about. Okay, and right across the street there, that corner is uh, Gene Brantley's property in that triangle. This one. Yeah, and then right over there, that's our property right there. So it's right diagonal, the streets width across it. Now what we got here is if I could see them making a very good event center, and this is my rough sketch, okay? You see the road, rather than being up there, the road coming off in, in the middle of the field, sort of, is, would be the event center, right in there, with parking associated with that road. Also, what I've shown here is an entrance off of Carmel Church Road, which you're talking about now, but they've got 15 kids on that road, and if they did that, they need to put speed bumps on that road and set the speed limit to 15, 20 miles an hour. I mean, that just makes sense. Also, if you did two, two things like that, then you'll be able to spread the traffic out a little bit. And they talk about they don't want it there on Highway 200 because of the vision, the site. Up here on Karma Road, people in charging in there, the site's worse. There's a hill right, right past that. So people coming down on the left side of the road, if people are stopped there to turn, that would be a hazard. But if you could spread it out between those two, have trees around the thing, you could have a beautiful, a beautiful center. Um, and only, like they say, not pack houses in there, dedicate it to the one thing and set it up that way so it's in the middle, it's enjoyable, it's a whole different thing. Squeezing it into that corner with 15 acres does not make sense for one thing. If you, can, if you can imagine living to the left of that where Wade lives and right across the street and you come out of your yard and it's right there in that corner and there's 14 acres behind it that are bare, it doesn't just make sense. Now, whether I don't have credentials or not, some things just make sense. Some things are just common sense. If you see something and it smells like something, you don't step in it. I mean, you don't need an expert to tell you what it is. <laughs> These things here are not represented the way that they should be. And the way, the way it's set up right now, I don't know what adaptions they're talking about. The way they had it right now is not, it's not good, especially if you do all the traffic off of Carmel Church Road. So anyway, I've taken a lot of your time, and I appreciate you listening. Thank you, sir. This one right here? Leave that slide right here. Uh, anybody have any questions for me? No. Okay. All right, next person. Thanks. Please state your name. My name's Ronald Wayne Gearing. Uh, I'm here basically for my parents, and I'm going to inherit that land where that, where that proposed septic tank is right there. Those are my parents right there, okay? I completely disagree with moving it to the venue to right there, and I'm sorry that I have to do that. <laughs> But that, right where he has that septic right there, I played there for 20 years. That land is soaking wet all the time. Literally soaking wet, okay? I walk over there with a four-wheeler and stuff because I played in that field when the farmer doesn't have it, the stuff in there with a the four-wheeler. I will sink a four-wheeler that far in there. That land will not take that septic, okay? That's just straight up me playing factual information okay? you're talking about this gentleman's proposed location no? right okay I'll just do that yeah I, I, yeah okay. so I'm just that, saying, that's I'm probably just why saying. that's probably why it's not that's probably okay. why they're engineering so that's right. it I just, wanna, okay. I, I just want to clarify that okay? Okay. okay now the next thing i want to just point out, and i'm going to be short with you guys okay just going to get right to the point okay too late <laughs> um like he said they're not here tonight we got families of little kids that have just all moved in on that road Right across where their entrance is, there's four little kids. Right beside there, there's four little kids. They're all on that, they play there, okay? I know they're not supposed to be on the street. Now we're taking and putting in a venue that's gonna have alcohol. They're coming out on that street, okay? You wanna take responsibility for it, you take responsibility for it, okay? I'm just, I'm making points that need to be addressed. Uh, again, speed bumps need to be put on there. Moving the entrance, have no clue why they want to move that entrance over to there. That road, people fly through. It's a shortcut between Plyler Mill and uh, 200. They fly down that road 45, 50 mile an hour all the time now. Okay? 
We've asked for speed bumps. Nobody wants to listen to us. Somebody's going to get killed. You guys take that responsibility if you approve of this, okay? Uh, now, as far as the, uh, he had two pictures up there. I understand you guys are saying there's a water, uh, right where that driveway is that they're talking about, there's a ditch right there that every house on that road, Max and my parents, okay, and I will get nervous and start to get, because I am passionate, okay? There's a ditch there. Now they've got to take and put some type of piping in there to clear that water out there. You got buses that can't even make the turn there. Now we're gonna have people that make the turn there that are coming out drunk and everything. So again, you got a drainage right there. You got a pipe that runs across the street from my uncle's house who he had moved because he lived right across the street. There's water that flows constantly underneath there. Right where that driveway is, okay? okay right there, there is a ditch that runs clear back to the back of that property. Okay, that's not on this map. They're not telling you. Okay, that drains back into a ditch back there. Okay, it is about four feet deep in some areas. Okay, it carries that water across. Now, from where they're talking about putting that septic in, there is another huge ditch. I understand you guys are saying it's man made. That creek goes onto my parents' property. Anything happens with that septic? It goes into there. It's going to go down the street to his house where there's a pond and there's rental properties. That's where all that water goes. Nobody has said anything about this yet. Okay? Those two things are what drains that field. That field is always sopping wet. Okay? That water comes across. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. Okay? Now, we're talking about noise. I understand they're putting in a proposal for what they want. What is this board or what does Union County have to say, okay, they're now going to have parties on Monday because they're having a birthday party, schools are out, Tuesday we have a bar mitzvah and we have all these other events. Is this something that's written where this is in stone, that this is what's gonna happen here? Are we gonna open this all up, okay? Uh, again, what type of events? I've seen it now where it says it's a wedding thing, then all of a sudden now I'm seeing things that say it's a sporting thing. Which is it? What kind of events are we really gonna have? What's the truth, okay? How are these events going to be controlled, okay? These are just questions. I'm just proposing them to you guys. I'm not asking for answers. How are they gonna be controlled? They got security. You guys and I know it. You guys go to a party, people are going outside, okay? It's going to get loud. My parents are right there, okay? Something goes wrong right there, Someone goes out there and shoots somebody because we see it all the time. But what, what's where are these things happening? And I know we're supposed to have control of it, okay? And we we should. But who's going to control this? Which police officers are going to be there? And everything. Um, who's going to be there with a counter, counting the number of people coming in? Okay. Again, are they going to have special events insurance coverage, Make mandatory by all the people with certificates of insurance? that show that they got the proper insurance to make sure that they're operating this correctly. Yes, they're gonna have insurance on the building, but what about the people that are having the party? Are they gonna go get the insurance for special events in the party, okay? Uh, now, when the, you guys, if, if you guys allow them to rezone this, what's to keep them from putting any other properties on this that it's been zoned for to other events? What's to keep this from turning into a place where they have soccer? What's to keep all this in? Okay. Can you answer that for him. Well, I, I was going to let him finish. But yeah. I, well. Okay. So. <laughs> well, okay. I, I'll just tell you. Special use permit is, is for the specific use. They can't do anything above what we let them. Okay. Do. Again, I don't. Know it's that not that a rezoning. We're not rezoning it. We're just giving them a special use. Okay. So, it, it's um, just for this venue. They can't go outside and have a football field, which is a question I'm going to have in a minute about right. the sports part of this. But go ahead. Just let me spend, check here. Those are my questions, but again, I know that field from playing in that field. That field is soaking wet all the time. I considered buying that property, okay, to put a house on. After my research on that property, you ain't gonna be able to get nothing on there, okay, as far as something real. You put a parking lot in there on the back side of that parking lot, that water's all gonna flow right onto my parents' property, 
Okay. So, but and my parents. But basically, what you're saying is, the spot that they have marked off for where they want to put it is basically the only spot they could anyway. Yes. Correct. Okay. That's the only spot that I know of that will stay any kind of way. But do you still have the ditch that you, someone has called ma a man-made ditch that I'm, I'll be more than welcome, come to the house and go back in our backyard and see the four-foot ditch that's back there that's got water running through it. And it goes through right where they're talking about putting a place. So man-made ditch is running onto my parents' property. Are they putting a pipe or something in there to make it still drain there? And what are what ramifications? And I know you got upset a little bit when he was talking about septic. I am no expert in septics, okay? But what wait I'm minute, saying is wait a minute, let me clarify. I, I did not get upset. Okay. About it. Right here's my problem with somebody bringing a septic tank up. The environmental department of Union County in North Carolina controls that, not us. Okay. We we they laid out a thing of what they had to do in order to meet this right. qualification. And my only problem with it, if we personally go to attacking it, right. what's going to happen when you want to build a house over there mm -hmm. and your neighbor don't like the size of your septic tank right. because you want too big a house? Right. you got to be careful where you go with certain right. things. But my final thing is, again, right where they're going is, and I know that they, it said it's man-made, but that field, I mean, that's about the only place you can put it and then they have to put a driveway from Carmel Church all the way over there. Those are my concerns. And I'm just gonna leave it at that and everything and let the board consider my concerns on it and everything. But, you know, entrance on Carmel Church, absolutely not. And it, that, whatever design they do to put that septic in there, that is going to push water. I will speak to this for a fact. That right there where that septic is across the line is my parents' property, okay? It rains, and I'm not talking about a lot of rain. You walk back there, your feet will go down one inch into the water. That's fact. Come on out and see it. Okay? Thank you. Right. Um, but, um, well, that's all right, Mr. King, can I ask a question? I just, I just, I mean, maybe I need to go ahead. Yeah, you, more. I'm sorry, yeah. sir. Um, why is it a sport? Why, do, why are we revolting for sports? Is that just the way it's classified? That's I just mean, the way it's, it's classified this is as entertainment and sporting. Or sporting. Okay. So, but we can clarify. Yeah. They won't be sporting events. It's either or. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not. So it's, we, we can say in part you, of the deal. Right. You can say. Okay, I just want to clarify that. Yeah, you can specify that this is only for an event center okay, only, no sporting. I was trying to understand how we're going to have sports inside if it wasn't going to be a basketball yeah. arena. Because that's kind of hard to pull off. Also, another question for you on this engineering um, report that is in evidence now. Uh, it says that the proposed system is for new construction with a design flow of 1600 GPD on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and no flow on Monday through Thursday. So, can we mount how we can change? Well, that would be something that I the guess. engineer would have to recertify. Okay. We could do that, but. If they don't recertify it, then it don't happen. Okay, that's right. All right, sir, please set your name. All right, thank you. My name is David Edwards. I live at 1711 Carmel Church Road. And going on 21 years now, uh, when we bought the property up there, we have a quiet neighborhood, has been, still is today. My major concern, he bought of it, part of it, but uh, we have 15 kids on Carmel Church Road. And a lot of people use that road already as a drive through is it just a shortcut to Plotter Mill or a shortcut back to 200. And he's right, they do fly through there, and we've tried our best to get speed bumps, speed limits, science, whatever, and have been un unsuccessful with that. And I hope that will change. But my main, my main concern is you got a church across the street, you got schools out, the children are out there playing, there's that, we have pets up and down, all up and down through the neighborhood. With the increase of traffic is having it come out on Carmel Church Road with events where you're going to have drinking. Do we have somebody? I, back in my old days, I used to run bars and stuff and be a bartender and, and different things. There was somebody in those bars or supposed to have been to limit 
and monitor the amount of alcohol that was consumed in that bar. There's a law because if the bars let somebody over drink and they go out and kill somebody, they're partly responsible for that. Who's going to be in charge of seeing and monitoring how much alcohol is consumed at these events? We're going to have people running up and down and coming out and they're going to be loud. And I just have a major concern. I also have a concern with the number of people. You got a 3,600 square foot uh, building, which is about twice the size of my house, but you're also going to have bathrooms. You've got kitchens. You're going to have to have some storage to take up a lot of that space. How are you going to fit 200 people in a, in a building that small? My stepson is a fire marshal. I think they are a fire law. Of course, I'm sure that they've went through that and when they did the plans and all of that. But I'm just not going to take up a lot of, a lot of your time. Um, there are not woods surrounding the property as we've already seen just on one side. And there are no, as you stated, there's no houses on that side. I am concerned with the, with the noise. I'm concerned with the amount of time at night that they're going to have this because there is a, no, a noise ordinance at a certain limited time at night too, I believe, for the county. I, you, you can correct me if I'm wrong about that. But I do know in the past, we've, when we first moved there, we had some neighbors that liked to party out loud and late at night, and they called the sheriff's office, and they'd come over and they shut it down. Luckily, we had neighbors that were good enough and neighborly enough to adhere to our wishes at a certain time, just cut it down. But my concern is the increase in the traffic, who's going to control the amount of alcohol these people are going to be consuming on our property. That's all I have. Thanks, sir. Next. Good evening. I'm Chester Nixon, Max Bauermeister. That's the longest thing I'm going to say, promise. Um, I do want to make some uh, comments about two matters, and I have a question if I can be permitted that for the applicants. Yes. Uh, firstly, if you check the county records, all of that land in that parcel, which has been farmed until uh, the Mendez purchase, the two previous owners, the Melton family, had it for years and years and years, sold to the Gileads. If you check the county records, that land has always been zoned as unbuildable, and that's because of the soil content. However, I'm sure that they've done their due diligence with the uh, soil preparation study and the studies for the uh, septic disposal system. Uh, so I don't doubt, since I have a built-up system myself, my home, I'm at 1817 Carmel Church Road. I'm the direct abutter to the property, the first house in from 200 on the southwesterly side of the road. Uh, I know for a fact that my soil did not perk. I've been there 21 years. Uh, we knew it was a septic system when we built it. It's had to been replaced twice now because the soil saturation, the underlying substrate there is a type of soil that uh, someone else mentioned, blue tally. Uh, a lot of soil engineers call it bowl tally. It's insoluble yellow clay. Does not permit the permeation of water down to the substrate to be carried away and the bacteria removed. So as I said, I, I, don't, I don't doubt the engineering that's been done. I do have a variance uh, on this, the water engineer that the county has had look at that. While that man-made ditch of itself is not a blue line, as it drains behind my property, behind the Gearing's property, and on down the line headed towards Plyler Mill, does enter a pond at that point. Going across <coughs> that, it becomes a year-round stream which feeds directly into Little Richardson Creek. So there would have to be, in my mind, stringent uh, monitoring of this system because even with only three days uh, a week use, the potential for contaminants flowing downstream, particularly since we have an already historically high coli count in the soil around us, there would have to be some safeguards there and monitoring of the maintenance of that system. Uh, if I can ask a question of the, the Mendezes, it wasn't yes. specified. Uh, you folks mentioned that you would contact the Sheriff's Department for uh, security if needed 
but that you were going to implement security uh, personnel of your own, is that correct? Oh, is that a private company or just individuals you were going to hire? Or what's, what's the nature of the security? Are they people that are experienced and or licensed I, for that? Could I have one of the Mendez come up, please, to answer these questions? I didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> We've seen how other venues operate. We initially stated that we will implement more security than any of the other venues. So we stated initially, yes, we will contact the Sheriff's Department. We will have, you know, they, they will be aware of the events. And then in addition to that, we will have our own staff that will operate it, and we will have our own security. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you to make you feel safe. Oh, no. And, and I, I do want to state, I put down, because there's only two choices on the green slip, in favor or in opposition, I'm really neither. And I'm on the Carmel Church side, I'm the closest one to them. Okay. Um, I, the few discussions I've had with these folks when they've been on site, they've been cordial, they've been polite. Um, I did not know that until just recently that it was going to be an event center that was being proposed. Um, I am a recently retired sworn officer, still on active reserve with the Federal Department of Homeland Security. And so the security issue is something that I've been, you know, keyed in for the last 13 years of my life. Sure. Uh, so that was, that was my question. What was the qualifications of the security on, on board? And also to make known that further information on the drainage overall from the watershed. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Mm -hmm. My name is Ronald Gearing. I'm the senior of the own, own the five acres that's there on the lower end of that property. Okay. And uh, my concern is that I heard you say that they were only going to have a, this is just for a permit for this venue. For okay. What is going to happen to the other 14 acres or 13 acres? Will it stay the same, or is it possible once this is zoned? That they can build whatever they want to build in that property. No, sir. This, this, um, <laughs> the, the, we have a special use permit just for specifically this venue, and they can't add stuff to it. Right, Mr. King, if you want to explain more, you probably better. All right. Uh, one thing that I was going to mention to the board that I would highly recommend. Uh, there's been a lot of testimony here, but it is uncertain of the final layout of the site right i think that that's something that's very crucial sure. uh, to the overall determination the board makes um, so before the board renders a decision i think the board really needs to see that final conceptual plan that they have their design professionals working on to go to your question whatever is submitted and approved the site layout that i'm referring to they're held to that and nothing else can go there unless they come back to this board and request an amendment to the plan. So it would stay the same zoning as it is at present time? Zoning is not changing. Right. It's just a special use permit for a particular use on the property. Okay. Right, it, it, once, once it's determined this, if, if it's approved, there will be a plan approved and that's exactly what they're held to. If they go off that plan for some reason, you call Mr. King and he's gonna go out and investigate and they're gonna have to they're going to be in violation of special use permit and they're going to be in trouble. Right, and because now it's zoned now as unbuildable. Well, I'm not sure how, I don't know what that means, but. When you look on the tax card, right. um, and, and it's been changed, uh, I believe when I looked at it uh, yesterday, that it is, uh, they've got it changed so it says residential, but the property classification at one time was unbuildable because right. of the land suitability. But it's zoned R40. It is zoned RA40. RA40. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And also, whatever site plan they come up with, and the ever how many square foot or whatever for the building and the property that's being used with parking lots and all that, the special use permit can be specific to the area they put. In other words, 
they couldn't come down in this lower part and do anything as far as the special use permit. Okay. Because I've been here 21 years and I was very, I would have bought that property. I checked about buying that, all, that whole 15 acres. And they told me at that time I couldn't build anything on it. My property is right here. This, this five acres right here is all mine. So that long stretch there. All right, we come back and so we can hear. I think we know what you're talking about. You're on TV, so I'm, okay. when you walk over there, they okay. don't see you. And they don't Can I just talking. touch it or something? <laughs> yeah. My property is this right here. Okay. Well, it sort of looks like a triangle. I think we... Yeah, he just used Marked it red. Right all right, right gotcha. Yeah, I'm seven right years right old learning how to use all yeah, this. Right where the cursor is. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, absolutely. So, so there's there's trees between you as I remember, no, or is that the other side? There is no trees. No trees over there. The that's trees are on open. the other side. That's all open right gotcha. there. Gotcha. I was trying to orient it. So the trees are on. Okay, totally. Understand. So that's all open right there. So, so you I can see all the way over to two hundred. Yes, okay. the whole way over. Yes. All right. So uh, and I was concerned about that, you know, the venue and everything, and the noise and so on. And I'm very concerned about this road that may be proposed to come in off of Carmel Church. Correct. Uh, because, like I said, we just we do have several people here. They're not going to talk, but they're here with their kids. They have kids on that road, and okay. they're very concerned about it. So that would be a very bad thing to have that road coming may, off Mr. of Carmel Chairman. Church. Uh, and I'm sure that my church, which is further down the road, is very concerned also. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, yes, and, and Mr. King. Thank you. Yeah, as far as the driveway entrance goes, that's going to be dictated by NCDOT. That's something that this board has no control over. I, I understand that, but as you, um, I believe you indicated, Mr. Hanson was the one that suggested it be moved? That is correct. And he's not here to testify why? I mean, um, he's not here to testify why. I'm not saying he's not here to testify why is he not. <laughs> he's not test here to testify why he wants to move, why he's suggesting move. That is correct. So, okay. That's it. Uh, sure. Five, one, two. two. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, the one thing you're saying about the septic system that the plan says Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but what it does is it collects a certain amount of that right. yeah. and it distributes it. It has a pump yes, that sir. pumps it so many hours a day. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, when I drew this drawing here, I did not. Uh, I was not suggesting to put it here. I mean, I was just saying that there's probably some other place that they can put it, maybe here, here. I mean, that was an easy place to put it, and I know that's low, but mm -hmm. they could probably do an engineered system in here. Yep. It doesn't uh, have to be right there. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Can I just warn you? Excuse me? Can I just warn you about Yeah, this? sure. Anybody else? Because I'm not gonna swear in much, you know, please, this is it. Yeah. You don't have to fill out a piece of paper. Where? You don't have to do it now. Please do okay. it before you leave. All right. Where's the Bible? Somebody got a Bible up there for her? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter at hand. Okay, please. State your name. and. My name is Laurie Brantley. And you live where? I live at 3012 Lancaster Highway, okay. right across the street. Okay. I understand all this stuff y'all are talking about, the sewer system. But what we are worried about, it's going to change our way of living, Amen. our way of life. We are very, very calm down there. We have, it's country. We've got families everywhere. That's what we're concerned about. You can talk about all this other stuff. But we have lived there for 30 years. We don't have cops called. We don't have feuds. We don't have... My mother-in-law and father-in-law live right up the road, 93 years old. They don't want to hear this. They don't want to see it. I'm highly against it. It's going to change our way of life. Why did they have to come in here and change our way of life? Because they wanted to put a venue right across the street of homes with children, with pets. Now, I'm afraid of what's going to go on, I'm going to be afraid to leave my home. 
at night. You don't know what's going to happen over there. They don't know the people they're going to be having these venues for. What are they going to do? Screen them? Get, get, you know, see if they've had records? Our houses could get broke into. That's what we're concerned about. All this other crap, it doesn't mean a thing to me. I just don't want our way of life interrupted because they want to put a wedding venue there. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Anyone else at this time? Board, any questions, any comments, any redirections? Well, I have more questions than I've heard answers yeah. because yeah. there's so much not known. Yes, sir. Is it? I took a quick look at the uh, at that uh, septic system, and it's it's pretty well designed. I'm somewhat familiar with them, having worked on them for a number of years. But uh, as an engineer, but the uh, but I haven't read the whole thing, and there's a, a lot of uh, a lot of questions. Especially, you know, I mean, they do studies. They have to do um, drill down and do studies on on that drainage system. I mean, you just can't just put it anywhere. I don't understand that part. Well, of it. I believe that's probably why they proposed to put it where it was. That's probably the only place it's going to fit. Oh, really? I suspect. Okay. I mean, uh, based on what we're hearing. The, um, sure. Yeah, yeah, we're still open, so you may. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. well, I just wanted to make everyone aware that we did not choose where the drain fill would be. Uh, we had to contact Union County Health, and they were the ones who did the perk test. They were the ones who uh, marked and uh, basically let us know where the drain field would be located. Um, we do have an IP permit from them, and that's the reason we contracted with an engineer, soil scientist engineer, to be able to design the um, specific so, drain fill in the septic system that the county was requesting in order to have um, the building uh, approved for the wedding venue. Um, do you, so, all right, so you have that permit? I do, sir. Okay, good. Yes, okay. Thank I you. do have that uh, printed it out. We've actually had it since um, January, first, January 2nd of 2020. Okay, Yes. Thank you. Mr. Jelly, you, you, you indicated you had more questions than there are answers, so well, you want to elaborate? <clears throat> At this time, we really don't have a specific site plan. That's true. That's correct. And we absolutely cannot approve or disapprove something that we don't have the specifics for. Right. The only thing that is not shown right here is the new uh, entrance from Carmel Church and the, part, the new uh, parking area. Everything else was dictated by the county, and that's what is showing right there at the moment. Well, okay. I guess my problem with going any further with it tonight mm -hmm. is if it was to get approved, mm -hmm. with the concerns we've heard, it has to be approved for designated areas where everybody knows what's up front right then. Mm -hmm. and now Mr. we've done this before you can not close the hearing and you know and take in more if there's more evidence you want including a site plan you can wait for more evidence you, know, you don't have to make a decision tonight you can leave the hearing open and accept additional evidence you know at a future noticed hearing do you know when a final site plan do you have an idea of how long it's going to be before you have the road and the parking lot and all just done a, by the a couple architect? more days um is that the only thing? Yeah, that, that, I was hoping that this would get, you know, approved and that would be part of the condition mm -hmm. to going forward. I mean, because we can't dictate the road anyway, so. Well, Mr. Yeah, King, I, I spoke with, with the, yeah, uh, NCDOT, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can control, to some extent, the drive, it's just the accent. Where it comes off of the road, you have no control over. Right. Where it is on the site, if, if there are issues, like if Jim doesn't like where it is on the site or if it's violating you know, something in your ordinances, you do have some control over it. The only thing you can't dictate is where it actually hits public road. 
where it goes on the site, obviously there's setbacks involved and it would have to be within the certain setback and there are things you may want to look at before you make a final decision or leave it to Jim to make sure that it's you know approved within certain tolerances. Michigan. Yeah, just as a point of information, um, for the July meeting, I will not be present and I have asked Bjorn to um, be staff liaison for that meeting. So some of the questions you may have he will definitely be present for the meeting in July. Well, there is a current plan that should, with an entrance off of 200. That is correct. That That is what was submitted. And it's not approved by DOT either. It's just. Um, NCDOT has approved an entrance either on Highway 200 or Carmel Church Road. The staff recommendation was to move the driveway and the entrance to Carmel Church Road. So DOT has approved? Or yes. has not? This You're saying they have. Do you know this? Did that? We don't have yeah, a permit, was, I'm sure, yet. It but. was part of the um, the emails that were forwarded. Yeah, I would need to go back and, and I it. have one. I can show you. Uh, one. Okay. So if the DOT has approved an entrance mm -hmm. off of 200, but somebody on staff doesn't really like it, right? Bjorn's made the recommendation that the entrance be off of Carmel Church Road. He is our transportation planner. But that was just a recommendation. That was just a recommendation. It is in his professional opinion that that would be the safest place for entrance and not having yes. uh, the volume of traffic. Um, yes, and we agree with that as well. Okay, but at the same time, if <clears throat> what sh the statement she just made is true, NCDOT says it's all right to put it off 200. And would that, did they know the amount of people that could be there and all that? Yes, sir. And okay. they, they also had a copy of this site map, the site plan. Um, <clears throat> when we spoke on the phone and as well via email, um, I let them know, hey, what would be the difference between putting the entrance on this side and this side? And it did. Uh, concur with what the staff recommended after I let them know. So they were more lenient towards Carmel Church than NC200 only because of the traffic. Does, does anyone know how, how, I don't live near there, but how bad is the traffic, how is the traffic during the times that this will be operating? It would, it would hold it up there, it only just holds, it flows straight, so if you, if you try. I'm sorry, sir, if you're gonna. Again? Can you come up? Yeah, come up. I mean, there's a church nearby, so how, how does the, the church the church, is on Carmel the church. church. It's on Carmel Church. It's on yes. Carmel there, church there's so there's it's less traffic, traffic on Carmel Church Road. So, but there's no light at Carmel Church Road. No, and no, sir. No and and neither on Highway so 200. When that, that church comes in and out, does that create a big mess on, on Lancaster Highway or no? No. It's a small church. No. About 50 members. Okay. Yes. So much different. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, I've, the few times that, I've, well, the times that I've been there, I have not seen any church activity. But then again, I don't know their hours of operation. I had What's the speed speech. limit on the road, on 200, sir? Do you know? 45. 45, okay, thank you. 45. 45, thank you. It, there's part of this 55. But or it's in front of this property. 45. 45, thank you. Um, Kathy, I may need your help again. <laughs> I was not done speaking, but... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to address the other concerns. Um, everyone that we have involved in this project is a professional. It's not just us coming up with whatever. Everybody involved in this project is a professional. As far as the, uh, someone mentioned a ditch in, um, on our property not being a ditch, we did receive a comment from one of the staff members to um, do a jurisdictional review on that. We did contact the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality. Uh, Mr. Doug Paris, uh, who is an environmental specialist, was the one who came out. He analyzed that whole ditch and he was the one who deemed, based on his uh, studies, that it was man-made and that it was not necessary to have that there. Um, he even um, made the recommendation that if we wanted to, we could just either put a bridge over it or we can just close it up. He uh, took everything into account um, and he did not say that anything will be inconsistent to what we're trying to build there. 
uh, other people have stated. Do you have anything from him stating that? Or? Yes, and everything was forwarded as well as part of the, uh, the comments. Okay. That was one of the requirements. Okay, so we've got that? I'm yes. Um, well, Mr. King, I'm asking you. Well, you assume, yeah. <laughs> is it an email chain or? Uh, the email chain between me and Mendezas uh, was after the actual uh, agenda packet was smelled out. So no, the board has not received that. So any of that would need to be submitted as new evidence. Okay, thank you. Um, that was emailed specifically. The instructions that came with the comments said everything needed to be emailed to the specific person that was requesting it and to um, forward it to Union County, uh, to the Union County NC email, the general email right. as well. So Mr. King may not have everything, but some of the emails um, were emailed directly to the person who had requested that. Um, what else? Um, I understand, you know, their concerns. I, I hear what they're saying, but I've also what I've also heard is that everyone had the opportunity to purchase this land, but for whatever reason chose not to. That's the reason why we came into play and purchased this land. But everyone else didn't know the land was there. Uh, you know, they stated that they've lived there for a long time. They had the opportunity to buy it. Why is it now that? It's us that have it. That are, now they're, they're they're coming up with this, you know, type of concern. Um, I had a quick and, question, ma'am, yes. about the uh, just a simple one about the hours. Yes. So you you say that it's going to one, and does that mean that the actual events will be able to go to one, or is that for, for clean cleanup? And no, that down? that's when they're they're done. They're over. So it will go to one, and then you'd be cleaning up and breaking down after that. Yes. But as everybody will need to be out of the building by one. Mm -hmm. Um, and another thing, they're mentioned about, you know, concerns about people going into the property. Well, now, um, based on what I've heard from the uh, people that testified, now I know where the four-wheeler four tire tracks come from. So somebody has been, you know, crossing through my property for a long time now. So thank you for letting me know who you are. Um, so now I'm the one who's concerned about what's going to happen on my land and what's been, you know, happening when I'm not there. Um, and everyone's just speculating, you know, I guess hoping that the septic system would fail. We're not putting all this effort and all this money just to have something fail. And, they, and, and what I'm getting also is that they're not 100% uh, aware of us not rezoning the entire track. It's just that one special use that we're requesting. So everything else will remain the same. Um, and as far as the drain fill again, we had no say on this. It was uh, Union County Health Department who uh, did the test, um, marked where everything would be. Um, we have uh, an engineer working on the design. Um, the reason why the drain fill is, is large in comparison to a residential is because it is commercial size. It is uh, designed to accommodate more people. Um, I have a question. Do y'all have county water down there? County water. City water. It's public water source. You don't have a well. It's public water. You don't yes, have a well. Yes, it's public. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, again, we've everything that I've submitted again yes, has been by a professional. Um, mm -hmm. All right. And when I met, what, what I said that there were no houses immediately to where we would um, put the the building. I did not state that there were no houses all around there. I just specifically said right where we are uh, proposing the building to be. Mm. All right. Thank you. Um, okay, I'm gonna permit like five more minutes, sir. That's pull up this one. In their report, these are the 
These are the adjoining neighbors, but that's the ones that just pop up on the, that are right against it. Okay, now I'll show this one. This is the neighbors that are in proximity. All right, sir, I, the, the only one, yeah, I understand. That's okay, so pull up the, uh, the road just so that we settle that. Scroll one way or the other. Oh, oh. This one? That one. Okay, this is a highway that goes uh, down there. It's, it's a major highway. It's not like a back road highway. So there's consistent traffic. And the problem would be if traffic started slowing down there to turn in just right behind that sign. It's dangerous. Then it's dangerous. There's been accidents. It, it is, there is some sight way, but if you have people coming from the left and trying to turn and people from coming from the right and trying to turn, I'm just showing that there would be okay. some problem there. All right, thank you. Okay, board. I, I, I want to see what I'm voting on. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I know they put a lot of time and effort into it, but I, I would like to see the final site plan Okay. Before we make a decision. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why we can't vote on it because the only change he says is going to come up on the plan is the Carmel Church Road yeah. driveway. And we don't have control over that. That's DOT. Okay, but so maybe I misunderstood Mr. King. So the building, the septic tank, and all that is down pat where it's going to be. Do you have a site plan? The site plan that I have is exactly what you have in your package. Okay, so the site plan that you was talking about that we ha don't have, it, would it change where the building is? From what Mrs. Mendez has testified to tonight, no. So the only difference would be something about the driveway. It'd be the driveway and the parking. And also to show that where the S1, S2 screening buffers would be located. Let's... And you would still have to approve the location of the driveway and the screening and the parking lot on the new site plan. That is correct. That if they were to receive a special use permit from this board, then they would have to go through the standard review process through the county. But would there be a problem for us requiring it since it has been approved by DOT for the entrance to be off 200 and 200 only? That would be the, you know, you could make that a part of your, uh, a condition of your approval, yes. I guess my reasoning is I totally get the concerns of the neighbors and you get people in an area that they're not familiar with and they go out here, they don't remember exactly which way they come and next thing you know, they headed toward Plyler Mill Road and then that's putting extra people in their neighborhood. I agree. I'm, I'm, I get this a busy road. I'm just I'm trying to understand why they would want to. I, I get it. As long as they can meet their separation uh, requirements for the county for the uh, speed limit, I believe it's 260 foot separation between Carmel Church Road and the proposed driveway, um, and they can meet the separation requirements for NCDOT, then. Uh, yeah, I mean, NCDOT would be the final approval. But I mean, basically, if the NCDOT approved the drive on the 200, and it turns out that maybe it does present a problem, then it's their responsibility to put the signs up to address that problem, correct? Yes, sir. That would be the responsibility of NCDOT. You know, if you, if you have to put the road out, uh, the driveway, 
on the other road, Carmel Church, is that correct? The name of it? And it, it definitely expands the site plan for the, for the venue. Well, it doesn't really, the area of use, it does not expand, but what it does no. is it creates a drive going through the, the remainder of the property. Correct, and it has to be 200 feet from the corner, right? The driveway would be about 200 feet from the corner, somewhere over here. Yeah, 200 plus I, foot, that's correct. I, I, don't know. I, I think well, it changes I, the site plan quite a bit. Well, I think I understand his thought process on it. You put that long driveway through there and people have the opportunity to get in line or whatever. But uh, that could be done by design of a property or the parking area to force them to go out a certain way without dumping it onto the other highway. Jim, would the if they had a driveway off of the highway as originally platted, that drive would not have to cross that creek, correct? That is correct. Okay, so the only impact, or I'm sorry, I should have said creek, ditch, whatever it is. So the, uh, the, so the original plans does not, do not require building a bridge or damming up the uh, okay. ditch. Okay. That, that just, I just wanna make sure I understood the, because we were looking at a couple of maps that were turned different ways at different times. I, um, I always like to uh, dispense of cases for in the night of the meeting, but I understand there's some concerns and there's five questions we have to answer uh, tonight and I want to make sure we're prepared to answer them. And if the board's not prepared to answer them, then I'm not going to, well, I mean, y'all can do what you want to do, but as it's chairman tonight, I'm not going to push the matter um, if y'all are not comfortable answering those five questions, then absolutely, we need to wait, but uh, it's up to the board. <clears throat> now, before I close the hearing, or uh, we need to make that decision. As Mr. Thurman noted, we can continue this meeting if we need to, but after it's closed, it's kind of hard to do that. Uh, ultimately, I think it's your decision on whether to close the uh, testimony and proceed with analysis and a vote or to um, hold the hearing open until next month to accept whatever additional evidence such as the new site plan and um, whatever they got from Department of Environmental Quality, you know, to accept that evidence that uh, you know, didn't come in uh, before today. That, that's your call. Um, you know, based on input from your board, I would say. Well. And you can certainly so vote would, on it could, if could you we want. make a request of what we want? Well, if you were to approve it with conditions, you can approve it with. No, no, I mean, that's not what I'm saying. Can we make a request of what information? Oh, whatever. We what would more want evidence you want to hear next meeting? Oh, certainly. If there's certain things you you want to know um, that they're not prepared to answer today, or they don't have, or the documentation didn't come in in time, um, certainly um, you can let the applicant know there's more information you would like to see before you make a final decision, and what that information is. Well, I was just going to ask if there's questions about the way that the traffic patterns on that highway, we can address that. I mean, it is a 55 mile. Okay, ma'am, you're not sworn to testify, so um, at this time I'm going to rule that we're going to um, continue the meeting. We're going to, excuse me, sir, we're going to continue the meeting to the next month. Uh, can you get them back? Can we, is that enough time to notify everybody? Do we have to, I assume we have to notify everybody, right? Um, I mean, only the people here, right? Only the people here, okay. um, and since they're here, you are notifying them at this time. Okay, so we will continue the meeting until July the what's 20th. The July the 20th. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything the board needs to request? From? I'd like to. Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> Number one, tonight we heard a lot about a septic system. 
Now it's obvious we have a septic plan proposed by an environmental study that was hired and the county. So I challenge anybody to bring forth professional evidence with to support what was said because I don't I'm not questioning it. But I can only make a decision based on what professionals in this area is presented to us as evidence. So I would challenge somebody to bring something that or somebody that proves this septic system is so bad. And whether you do or not, it's up to you, but you also have the opportunity to hire your own appraiser to rebuke what they put forth. Because that was another thing that was, and we, we're, we as a board can't take hearsay evidence, so therefore, the professional evidence was what it was. And I know you guys lived there a long time. Y'all know more about the area than anybody. So the other thing, I want clarification on these driveway entrances. The pros and cons of why it needs to be dumped out on this other road that it appears doesn't have to be and it's creating a lot of building a bridge and all this other stuff. Anything else? Anybody else? Yeah. To the extent there are communications from the state approving entrances on both roads, uh, I think that should be in the next packet. Uh, to the extent you have that, I'd like to see that. Yes, I want to see oh. that. I also want to see the report that she's got yes. regarding the ditch. And what I have everything, um, in an email. Okay. Okay. okay, well, what we want to do is get it all on paper because, and they seem to be a lot of talk about stuff that want not give it to us. Let's try to get it all together, or if we're going to talk about it, we got the documentation to back it up. Anything else? No, I, I just want to second what Mark said the driveway is. To me, is important. And Bjorn will be here, yeah. so Bjorn yeah. can give the reasons why he wanted it moved. Exactly. And um, and the DOT apparently has approved either way. I, I don't know, but we'll talk to Bjorn. Right, Bjorn's here to do that. That's his job. Good. He's the guy from the county who suggested it be moved. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. So he'll be here to testify. And, and may I say also, when presenting evidence at the June 20th meeting, you'll need to bring, or I'm sorry, July 20th, you'll need to bring nine copies of each document to present as evidence so each one of the board of members has the um, exhibit to look at and also an exhibit is entered for staff for the public record as well and that goes for both applicant and opposition anything else all right we'll see you back here is it july 20th july 20th july 20th thank you all Mr. King, I believe you had another matter you needed to discuss. Yes, real quick and not to take up much of the board's time. Um, this board uh, was approached by the Cox brothers back in 2019 regarding... I'm sorry, let's let these folks okay. exit. And Could y'all yeah. please talk outside? Yeah, could 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 y'all y'all can step outside, please? If y'all can everybody y'all feel free to talk outside. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. King. If you want to go ahead and down and share with us the other item. In 2019, this board heard a uh, request for special use permit for a biogas plant located on um, Lancaster Highway, Mr. Uh, Rusty Cox's property. Uh, Pageland Highway. You so, said Lancaster. I'm sorry. Pageland. <coughs> we got Lancaster. 601. Yeah, 601. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, that project has never come to fruition and one of the things that states as far as a special use permit is it says that they have to obtain a building permit within one year staff typically has worked with applicants and if they have a plan that's in the works that's being reviewed we'll typically work with them to get them to fruition in this case we had a sketch plan and the sketch plan was submitted March of 2020 here we are, June of 2021, and staff has requested revisions to that uh, sketch plan. Those revisions have never been submitted. Uh, staff feels at this time that uh, that SUP should be revoked. And wanted to bring that to the board's attention. Um, if the board has any concerns, please let us know. Otherwise, uh, we will write a letter to the property owner tomorrow uh, revoking that special use permit. That is under your authority, correct? That is correct. The uh, zoning ordinance gives the zoning or the administrator the authority to void a special use permit. I have no issue with that. Does any, I, don't, I don't even know how. Do we even have the right to tell you not to? I don't understand. <laughs> I think you're giving this as information, I believe. That's correct. All right, that's correct. Anybody? No, sounds good. Yes, Mr. Do you have anything? Um, one issue for the next meeting to the extent that. I know it's vacation time, but it would be very convenient if most of you who are here tonight are here in July, just for continuity of who heard the evidence and who did. Unfortunately, there's six of you here, and we can flip out alternates because although you weren't officially sitting today, you heard the evidence. So it would be, you know, convenient, you know, to the extent. You know, I'm not saying cancel a vacation. <laughs> I mean, if you've got plans, you've got plans. But if you're on the fence about something or just beat from work and don't want to come or whatever it is you know it, it'll be convenient for both the applicants and the um, you know neighbors you know for continuity of evidence we've got room because we only need three people right but I just wanted to make that point sure all right nothing else motion to adjourn so moved second all in favor aye, aye. aye. can we just keep these Amy